Well, if you're familiar with the New Testament, particularly the Gospels, you've heard this term before, son of man, because this was Jesus' favorite way to refer to himself. This was his favorite title. Unfortunately, much of the deeper meaning of this title can often be lost on us. Because we hear the son of man and we tend to think that's a reference to his humanity, right? He's a son of a man. And that's true, but there's a deeper truth happening here and it's actually ironic. And the irony is that this is actually a claim to deity. When Jesus says, I am the son of man, he is claiming to be God. How? How does that work? Well, Jesus knew his Bible well and he drew this phrase, this title, Son of Man, directly off the pages of Daniel. Daniel chapter 7, to be precise. And I want to put a couple of verses up for you. And I wish we had time to spend our entire sermon on these two verses alone. This, this is really astounding. I want you to listen very carefully to what this says. Daniel has a vision. He says, in my vision at night, I looked. And there before me was one like a son of man, coming with the clouds of heaven, he approached the Ancient of Days and was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All peoples, nations, and men of every language worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. Okay, so right away we're introduced to two characters. There are two distinct persons in this passage. There's the Ancient of Days, and there's a Son of Man. Who are these guys? Well, the Ancient of Days is an Old Testament title for God. We would refer to him as God the Father. Now, of course, the Old Testament Jewish people didn't yet have a fuller revelation of who God is. They knew there was only one God, to be sure. Hero Israel. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. What they didn't yet fully understand is that he was a plurality of one. He was a community of one. He was a tri-unity. And so we first meet the Ancient of Days, but who is this Son of Man? Well, notice carefully how he's described. Listen carefully and, and ask yourself, who does this describe? The Son of Man, it says, rides on clouds. He has authority, glory, and sovereign power. All the people of the world will worship him. His dominion is everlasting and will not pass away. In fact, his kingdom will never be destroyed. Who does that sound like? It sounds like God to me which is really astounding when you think about it. This is an Old Testament reference to the first and second members of the Godhead. This son of man, we have the Ancient of Days, of course, but then this son of man who's also God. Somehow, this man, son of man, will be God, a king, an eternal ruler. And it's such a mystery in the Old Testament, but it's a mystery revealed in the New, in Jesus Christ, of course, the God-man. So when Jesus refers to himself as son of man, he is saying, I am a man, human being like you, but I'm also God. I am the sovereign ruler of the entire universe. All nations will worship me and I will rule over my everlasting kingdom forever. And so now when John says he turned and saw someone like a son of man, he's saying that he saw the second member of the Trinity. He saw Jesus. This is Jesus. This is our God. Then John describes what Jesus looks like. But it's important to know that this isn't really what Jesus looks like. This is a symbolic vision, okay? These are symbolic language. For example, Jesus doesn't really have white hair that feels wool, feels like wool. And he doesn't really have a tongue that's a sword coming out of his mouth, and he doesn't his feet really aren't metal. These are, these are symbols of who Jesus is, his character and his nature. So what we're gonna see is that Jesus is revealed here as the prophet, priest, king, and judge. 
He's the prophet, priest, king, and judge. And those, by the way, are Old Testament leadership roles. They're ministry titles, if you will. And so look at those. Let's look at those. Number one, prophet. In verse 16, it says, out of his mouth came a sharp double-edged sword. Again, it's symbolic. And again, Scripture interprets this symbol for us. Ephesians 6 tells us that the sword is the word of God. Now, a prophet is one who speaks God's word to God's people. And sometimes that word actually becomes a weapon. For example, in Revelation 19, speaking of Jesus, it says, out of his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress wine press of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. That's sobering. In other words, Jesus will slaughter whole nations who rebel against him. He will strike them down with the power of his word. And a few verses later, again, in reference to those who align themselves with the Antichrist, Jesus says, the re- it says the rest of them were killed with the sword that came out of the mouth of the rider on the horse, and all the birds gorged themselves on their flesh. Again, Jesus will kill all the people who refuse to surrender to his authority. He will strike them down with the power of his word. And even more sobering is what he says in chapter 2, because this time he's not talking about his enemies, he's talking about the church. More specifically, he's talking about false converts within the church. He says this, Repent, therefore, otherwise I will soon come to you and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Don't miss the subtle nuance. He says, I will come to you and fight against them. He's talking to the church. And Jesus is saying that he will destroy false converts, people who pretend to be his followers but are not. Now, in the Old Testament, the people usually ignored the word of the prophets and they'd often kill them. Not so with this prophet. In fact, it's the other way around. The people who refuse to submit to his word will be killed by his word. This is Jesus, the prophet, and this is our God. But he's also a priest. He's a prophet and a priest. We see this in verse 13. John saw someone like a son of man dressed in a robe reaching down to his feet with a golden sash around his chest. A robe, this is the kind of thing a priest would wear. And the golden sash indicates that this is a highly exalted priesthood. Jesus is the high priest. What's a priest? A priest is one who mediates between us and God, who stands between us, who brings us to God and God to us. Jesus is the high priest and he's the only mediator available. The only path to peace with God is in Christ. Rather famously, Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I am the mediator. I am the priest. This is Jesus, the priest. This is our God. But he's also a king. And we've actually already seen this in his title, Son of Man. We've already seen that this is a royal title, but not just for any monarchy. This Son of Man rules over his kingdom with absolute authority, majestic glory, and sovereign power. His dominion is everlasting and will not pass away. His kingdom will never be destroyed, and all the people on earth, every tribe, tongue, nation, every people will worship him. 